I wanted to give a bit of an update today on the details of the court attendance notices for the court case that uh, Gillian Norman, or the criminal charges that she attempted to privately prosecute against uh, Richard Mote, Adrian Brannock, Steve McSween and Mark Darwin in the um, Merbar Local Court, 28th of March 2017. Now, before I get into the uh, actually what happened that day, uh, what I'm going to say about what happened that day, uh, I would say is unsubstantiated, simply for the fact that I was not there that day and there's nothing on paper to substantiate that to me. However, there were people there that day and their different perspectives has all come together uh, in what I will present as what happened that day. So it is, from my perspective, unsubstantiated and substantiated from the perspective of those that actually experienced it or um, in some way, shape or form have confirmed different things that have gone on. Uh, like the people that didn't show up that day that were scared off because uh, they were... S well, let's face it, when you've got uh, children and someone starts making threats, you know, you go and help someone out, it's going to be hard for you, you know, we can start picking on you next. You know, you've got to... Um, you know, you've got to consider your kids and you do, a lot of people backed out of showing up as giving evidence that day uh, because they were actually too scared to show up. So when I say that this whole story is from different perspectives of even people that didn't show up, there were people that did intend to show up but had legitimate reasons to fear showing up that day. So, um, so the following conglomerate of what happened that day comes from many different perspectives, as I said. And from mine, uh, because I don't actually have a, a court document that actually says this went on, um, I'm presenting it as other people have given it to me and I've pictured it together. So what happened that day, what should have happened, is that Gillian Norman attend court to face, um, well, to have these four answer the allegations made against them, the criminal charges, and she w was intending that there would be uh, witnesses there that day. The witnesses didn't show up and she was faced with heckling outside the court by these people who intimidated her. They yelled at her um, abuses inside the court and um, just before the judge came out. And uh, the judge didn't hear, of course, the childish behaviour, but we've seen Adrian Brannock's email, haven't we? We know what this... Uh, toddler is capable of and how childish and immature he will behave and what a bully he is too. He's just a down and outright bully. He not only bullies other people and laughs and enjoys doing it but he also gets other people to do that as well. And I know that there are, at the time this was going on, there were 21 uh, unit holders as such in the community and most of those on the left hand side didn't put one cent into it that they didn't get back out of it and Chilean Norman uh, she paid 120000 and this complaint here is about how they took her $90,000 mobile home stole it off her and trashed it and got rid of it and there are people that witnessed that that actually confirm that, uh, well, 
she was not the only one that had things stolen. In that day in court, it was it didn't go very well for Julia Norman. First of all, the judge came out and she said that none of the witnesses had showed up, but she had evidence to present to the court and she also had eight people, other people that wanted to join on with their own offences into the action against these people and the alleged crimes that they've committed. So she's presented this to the judge and said, the witnesses haven't showed up, but I do have evidence here. And I also ask that you know, essentially the fact that she said there are eight other people that want to add their own charges or description of offence to this, the judge sh should have said, yes, we will allow that. We will adjourn it to allow the other parties to put in their information and then we will look at any evidence and any witnesses. So yes, we will give the opportunity to all those other eight that have been um, that have would like to join in will give them that opportunity but instead what happened that day is that the judge said no if you haven't got your witnesses here um, you can't I don't want to look at your evidence I she tried to submit, Gillian Norman tried to submit evidence to the court. The court refused it, then banged down the hammer and said dismissed. Dismissed. Did not hear any evidence, would not allow eight other people who have got allegations of criminal offences against them would not allow them to even be heard. I tell you that uh, whoever the judge was that day, his ruling, his judgment to dismiss that without allowing eight other people to have their due process to be heard, that's, I'm sorry, that's to me is an abuse of office and a clear prejudice that he came out with an intent to not even look at any evidence. What can a judge make a judgment on if he will not look at the evidence? What is he ruling on? Anything? No. He's only ruling on his own opinion, his own prejudgment. Because if he dismissed a case, without looking at one scrap of evidence, he has a prejudgment. He's not going to hear any of it because he's already decided it's worthless. No, it is his legal obligation to hear that evidence first. So yes, that judge that day, you're on my list too. You have not fulfilled your judicial duty. You have completely come into that court with a prejudice. And as that, you should have dismissed yourself and referred the case on to someone who would actually look at the evidence before making a judgment. It's disgraceful behavior. It's no wonder I can't find anything who'd want to put their name on making such a terrible decision and clearly a prejudiced decision. But anyway, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Now the next thing is actually more for the, uh, quest the property in question is this property here, 3222 Kyogre Road. Now it is no the reason that it can't be built on is because it's a water catchment reserve uh, it's never going to be pulled out of that status to actually allow any more building than what's already on there so essentially uh, I look at that side of the hill that we can look at on Google Earth as that's been all bared up 
I look at that as what the cattle would get, graze across. They'd be manuring it, enriching. Uh, healthy grass is growing, they're eating that back. But because of the weight of uh, them grazing across the land, it's compacted the soil. When it rains, that water just does that beautiful clean runoff straight down, as it should, the water catchment area, uh, area straight down into the river and fills it up with this beautiful clean water. And that's the whole purpose. But the thing is that what they've done has had an environmental impact. They've bared up the soil and the water catchment area, when the rain is coming down now, instead of all that beautiful fresh water running down into the, the river, you've got uh, water particles. You're essentially uh, washing mud into a pure water source and contaminating it. So for those uh, neighbours that are directly impacted by this, I would suggest that you uh, contact council and put your concerns forward about the uh, environmental impact they're having up there the, and the damage they're doing to the water catchment area. This is a serious concern and it's not only a concern just for uh, the neighbours directly involved but the uh, river itself is for everybody. This is them polluting a major source of fresh water that many 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 people rely on for many different reasons so w it is pretty much your responsibility to report that pollution to the council and ensure that uh, that damage uh, is repaired that uh, it is monitored until that water catchment area is restored and it's not washing pollutants and mud and other things that clog up the pristine water conditions of it from that location. Now that's one thing that is most definitely an actionable thing by the community. The environmental impact concerns on the water catchment area is something that everyone can get involved in and it is a main issue too. We all know this. <laughs> but anyway, the next thing I'm going to get on to is a little bit about what's been going on down at the Mount Burrell Commercial District. Now, I heard the other day, and this would, I know how this would be, you know, how far it is between surveys along some roads and you get somewhere and the petrol pump doesn't work it's like are you serious do you know how far it is to the next place where I can get petrol and then you think oh damn I'm not gonna make that so even just not for the locals but people traveling in the larger area I know how important places like the general store at Mount Burrell are not only for that um, you know quick fill up with petrol but let me get a nice cool drink and maybe a, a snack to eat because I'm busy I'm on the road I'm not going to sit down at the Sphinx Rock Cafe today and take my time but I'm also maybe not that busy that I might just stuck into the fruit and veggie shop and just uh, get some of the locally grown delights you know it's just so nice to know that you're eating something that yeah, it comes from where you are. You feel more connected to it. Organic. <laughs> Organic food. And, uh, yeah, then you jump in your car and off you go. So I know what it means when you call into the general store to do all that and you can't get petrol. Really stuffs up your day, doesn't it? But even more so, if you're a local and you go there, you can't get petrol and you've got to travel, you know, 20, 30 k's out of your way to now fill up where you could have just done it a k or two down the road. So I've heard that the general store have had problems with the uh, petrol pump there and uh, I can understand what a frustration it would be to everybody because of that. And uh, further to that, uh, I've heard that the uh, leaseholder of the general store 
has sold his lease and he's getting out. Uh, I don't know if that is actually true or not. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm that. There's no changes lodged in things that I can see. And it would be very difficult to tell because people that operate under an ABN, pretty much everything they do is private. It's not ever made public, so you're never going to find it out. Only unless you know someone has the records on it and you get to see them. So um, I'm going to dive into a little bit of uh, unsubstantiated um, surmising in that uh, I know that the Sphinx Rock Cafe owners of the lease did not want to leave that business, but it became uncomfortable for them to be there. Much like, I suppose, that the guy in the general store sold his lease because it became too uncomfortable to be there. As I've said before, you know, some people to do, do, do business with, you don't want to deal with, so you walk away. But the interesting thing is the fruit and veggie shop. Now, the story we've heard from the community themselves about the Mount Burrell fruit and veggie shop is that um, they walked away from it because there was a death in the family. Well, I don't know how true that is, but when it's coming from somebody that has been known to play loose with the truth, um, let's look at the Mount Burrell fruit and veggie shop, also known as Bernini Nenini. Now, people on YouTube know that that's also Mark McMurtry or Gunnam Buddy Giacomara's other name. He uses that to troll with on YouTube and leave what he thinks is anonymous. So, Mark McMurtry and his wife uh, run the fruit and veggie shop. <laughs> that there was a, a death in the family that they walked away from and didn't come back to. Well, when you find out that Mark McMurtry was in the fruit and veggie shop and they walked away from it because of a death in the family, I'm looking at the whole Mount Burrell commercial aspect that manages all those businesses. I'm looking at the uh, paper side of it, who for all intensive purposes looks like they've been under, under receiver managership for several years now. This is something that needs to be clarified and I will be. Uh, Tomorrow I will be conducting full uh, searches on all of these companies involved and getting all the details up to date, who was involved, past directorships, shares, everything. And I'm going to bring all the search information that I already have up to date. And I'm mentioning that because in my next video I'm going to be Talking about another point on the spear, Mark McMurtry. Yes, he's got a fairly big role in this too. We've been focusing on AB, but uh, let's not forget about another important person that, well, as far as they claim themselves to be, a nightcap developer. There are two clearly identified nightcap developers, Adrian Brennock and Mark McMurtry. So we're going to peel back a little bit of Mark McMurtry in my next video. But uh, let, uh, just uh, finishing on the Mount Burrell commercial area and the problems there too. Uh, I know that, uh, yes, as I said, what I've heard about the people in the Sphinx Rock Cafe, for several years it has been uh, difficult for them, I suppose you could say. Uh, but they've got a lease and they've got a good business, they love it and they try to make the most of it. Now an interesting aspect here too is that now that they are gone, Pete Evans is going to apparently set up his place in there. Now I haven't, other than my video I've done on him in the last couple of days, I haven't mentioned much about Pete Evans even though well, I haven't mentioned a lot about a lot of people that are going to come out one at a time and we'll focus on them one at a time. 
so that we can see how they fit into the bigger picture because uh, as I said at the time there were 21 unit holders that participated. Now these are more than 21 people because one unit holder could represent a family as in Sarah and Tamady Kirkwood's case and four kids. So one representative sh unit lot shareholder vote at, at a particular time represents the values of a group of people, not just one. So there are a lot of players. They've got a lot of uh, their own companies that link back into Nightcap Developments. Mark McMurtry is one of them. And another one I haven't even really mentioned too much is Derek Zillman. Now there are three important players that are connecting through Yadaki Capital and Constructions, two separate different companies but both Yadaki, and uh, it seems to bring into play Adrian Brennock, Mark McMurtry and Derek Zillman. And they seem to be the spearhead of NCV Enterprises, which is the development umbrella that they're doing everything else under. And everything that does lead back to NCV, because uh, when I say it's the umbrella, it's covering a lot of companies, uh, connections and everything like that. So what we're going to do is pretty much take away that umbrella and see what it's covering. But uh, that's it for this video. I didn't want to make it long. I'm sorry I made the last one so long. I just wanted to give you an update and to bring to the uh, awareness of m maybe people in the community that there is a water catchment concern uh, specifically around this pro property that each and every person that is affected by the river that runs past can make a valid complaint to the council about their concerns about pollution from damaged water reserve catchment areas. The soil's been bared up. We know what bare soil does. It slides straight off and into the river and it's just filling it up with muck. It's killing everything in the river. I mean, I know what it was like down at Yukai. I used to go and after I'd go down the shop, I'd grab my, my lunch and I'd go sit down right on the rocks and I'd watch the fish, you know, and I'd just sit there and enjoy it. And I want to be able to see the fish. And as I'm sure I want you, you want to see through the water too. It does not need to be turned into muddy muck like, well, yeah, like what you see when you go through Lismore and you look over the bridge. We don't want it looking like that. So please, if you have a concern, voice that with the Tweed Council. And with that, I'm going to leave it on that one for today. <laughs> Catch you on the next video.